Along with Shai Davidi and surrounded by a lot of concrete here at Rogers Center. Shai, this field is not ready for baseball right now, but that has not stopped a number of young players being in town for a clinic. And we've heard so much about the well is dry when it comes to Blue Jays prospects. When you see the number of hopefuls that are in town this week, does it give fans a little hope that maybe there is something there in the system right now? Well, the big difference, Barry, between the Blue Jays farm system this year in comparison to last year is that a lot of the, the talent in the lower levels is starting to mature and is starting to populate the upper levels of the system. And last season, when the Blue Jays didn't really have a lot of options at double A and triple A, especially of the homegrown variety, the Blue Jays are going to have that this year. There's going to be guys like Rowdy Telez who could possibly break through, the first base slugging prospect. Someone like Reese McGuire, the catcher acquired last year in the Loriano deal, is going to be hanging around and, and maybe able to break through. Outfielder Anthony Alford continues to make progress. So that's where the, the big big difference in the Blue Jays farm system uh, this year is compared to last season there's starting to be a lot a little bit more maturity and that's going to potentially help the big league club for the folks that are unaware, maybe you can explain a little bit about what is going on here this week. Well, this is a, a program that the Blue Jays had started uh, a number of years back where they invite uh, a series of prospects who potentially have the chance to break through uh, in the next year or two. And, and what they want to do over the course of a week here in Toronto is acclimate them to what life in the big leagues is going to be like. And certainly they can't replicate what the what the on-play, on-field play is going to be, but they can really simulate a lot of the things around it. So uh, I'll give you an example, bullpen coach Dane Johnson and hitting coach Brooke Jacoby ran, ran the prospects through uh, a typical advanced meeting that they'd get at the big league level. So those are some of the things that they can try to make the players get, get used to in advance, have them be prepared. So if they are called up to the big leagues, they can more readily step in and perhaps contribute. Shy, last year in spring training, Connor Green really made a name for himself. I think people were expecting him to start a little bit higher than down in Dunedin and A-ball. He did work his way up to double A, but is he a guy that you see ready to maybe make that next step? Well, he's uh, an un another one of those players who is on the cusp and, and could start making some progress. Now, uh, what we've seen from this Blue Jays front office is they're, so far at least, is a, a bit more deliberate in their plans for prospects. They have certain check marks at every level before they want to advance a player. Uh, and so if he's going to be able to continue the progress that he made last year and, you know, big big areas of gain for him last year were in his focus on the mound and his routines off it and becoming a bit more consistent and that led to him to be able to get uh, some more quick outs on the mound which helped him get deeper into games. If he can continue that and the Blue Jays have a need, he could perhaps get, break through. But again, we've seen this, this, this front office be very deliberate with its prospects particularly with pitchers, and we'll see whether or not that continues. Well, believe it or not, spring training is about a month away for pitchers and catchers reporting in Dunedin, and we are getting very close to baseball starting up once again.